Welcome and thank you for joining us. You've heard the expression, red skies at night, sailors delight, red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. Who knew this was actually referring to the sailors 5G mobile service? That's right. Weather can have a very real impact on mobile networks. Today, we will discuss how this occurs and what mobile operators need to do to overcome this challenge. Let's start by first reviewing the RF interference sources that negatively affect mobile operator license spectrum. Interference from within the RAN itself, which requires network optimizations. Interference from external sources outside the mobile network. Interference from PIM sources due to antenna, cable, or connector problems at a site. Interference from faulty hardware units or hardware at a site. Interference in border areas due to differences in band allocations between countries. And the focus of our discussion today. Interference from signals carried long distances during periods of tropospheric ducting. Tropospheric ducting is a large-scale physical phenomenon that typically occurs during hot and humid weather conditions. During a tropospheric ducting event, RF signals propagate over long distances. These RF signals can cause uplink interference, degrade network performance, and rain down on subscriber quality of experience. Now let's dig deeper into the tropospheric ducting phenomenon. Ducting occurs when differences in air temperature and moisture content produce a layered structure in the atmosphere. In the diagram on the left, there is a pocket of dry air surrounded by cool moist air surrounded by warm dry air. When this occurs, the refractive index of the atmosphere increases and causes RF signals to bend and propagate greater distances. The map on the right shows the tropospheric ducting conditions over time for the Gulf region of the U.S., Mexico, and Caribbean. Red and yellow indicate strong levels of ducting. The map is courtesy of William R. Hepburn's DX Info Center. This phenomenon affects all frequencies and RF signals can travel hundreds of kilometers. Transmissions that occur from neighboring countries will propagate further when ducting is taking place and can cause uplink interference to distant base stations. This is referred to as cross-border interference. The downlink transmissions of TDD base stations can propagate across large distances causing interference to the uplink of faraway base stations. This is referred to as TDD self-interference. Interference during periods of ducting can be severe, affecting signal quality and causing service disruptions, sometimes for several hours at a time. Since ducting interference is intermittent, it is challenging for operators to isolate and mitigate. As a result, these conditions often occur under the radar of the operators. Trophospheric ducting creates interference issues across borders of neighboring countries. Mobile operators in their respective governments typically have agreements with operators and governments of bordering countries regarding the level of transmission in the border region. Operators take these transmission levels into account during network planning. When tropospheric ducting occurs, RF signals travel further distances, which invalidates RF propagation assumptions used for network planning. Here are some examples where we show the frequency time charts of cells from one country receiving interference from another country. If there is a different band allocation between countries for UMTS or LTE FDD, signals carried via tropospheric ducting will cause interference on the uplink channels. For LTE and 5G TDD systems, even if the mobile networks in neighboring countries have common band allocations, the channelization may be different, and the networks are not typically time-synchronized. As a result, TDD networks will receive transmissions from the downlink of base stations in neighboring countries. Within an LTE or 5G frame, there is a portion of time allocated to downlink transmission, a portion of time allocated to uplink transmissions, and a guard period between the transition from downlink to uplink. TDD cells are time-synchronized over the entire network, meaning these frames are aligned in time at each of the TDD cells. When a cell loses time synchronization due to a fault, its frame becomes misaligned with the cells at the other sites. As a result, its downlink transmissions will cause interference in the uplink with nearby cells and vice versa. This is TDD self-interference due to a loss of synchronization. This type of interference impacts nearby base stations. The further the distance between the base stations, the greater the propagation delay of the downlink transmissions. 
the guard time is selected in networks to protect from the delays in downlink transmissions due to time of flight from nearby base stations, typically with 40 kilometers. If the guard time is exceeded, it results in interference in the uplink at victim cells from the downlink of aggressor cells located at distant base stations. This TDD self-interference is due to downlink transmissions arriving at a cell after the guard time. Macro base station antennas with elevated heights are most vulnerable to this form of interference. To prevent this TDD self-interference, the guard time needs to be increased at the aggressor cells during the periods of ducting. The trade-off of increasing guard time is that it decreases capacity, and it's undesirable to take a capacity hit on all of the cells all of the time, when only some of the cells are affected part of the time. Ideally, the guard time should be adjusted only for the aggressor cells and only when the ducting is active. With PRB charts, we are able to visualize the impact of TDD self-interference during periods of tropospheric ducting. The charts show the frequency of an LTE TDD channel on the y-axis and several days of time on the x-axis. The signature within these PRB charts reveals the channelization of the aggressor cells. The network performance will be favorable when ducting is not active, the proverbial calm before the storm. When the ducting becomes active, the interference arrives and the network performance performance severely degrades. The presence of TDD self-interference changes over time and develops when the right tropospheric conditions occur. The map on the right shows a time-lapsed video of how TDD self-interference impacts cells across a large region. In the chart on the left, the white line shows the number of cells impacted by TDD self-interference due to ducting over a five-day period. TDD's self-interference due to tropospheric ducting severely impacts network KPIs, often causing impacted cells to lose half of their capacity. The portion of the uplink channel that is most impacted by this interference is used for uplink channel sounding purposes. Sounding reference signals are used to estimate downlink channel conditions based on channel reciprocity of TDD's system. Even though it is the uplink channel and not the downlink channel that experiences interference during ducting conditions, the base station applies a lower SINAR estimate to the downlink channel. A less optimal modulation and coding scheme is then used, resulting in lower spectral efficiency, decreasing downlink channel capacity. The 5G NR TDD frame structure determines the period of the downlink uplink transmission. A shorter period means a lower latency while a longer period provides for greater capacity. The 3G PP standards have defined many options for the frame structure. The figure on the bottom right is an example of one of the many 5G frame structures defined in 3G PP. The figure on the left shows the LTE frame structure for comparison purposes. Operators can select the 5G frame structure that best fits the needs of the services provided in that frequency band. For services like enhanced mobile broadband, realizing higher downlink throughputs at the expense of higher latency is acceptable. For services like ultra-reliable low-latency communication, realizing strict latency at the expense of some capacity is required. For outdoor cellular service in sub-6 GHz frequencies, the 5G TDD uplink-downlink pattern will be similar to the LTE uplink-downlink pattern. The maximum 10 millisecond downlink-uplink transmission period will typically be used for cellular service to align with LTE, especially when both technologies are used in the same band. Since a similar frame will be used, 5G networks will experience ducting interference with similar levels to TD LTE networks. Within 5G NR networks, the guard period defined by NR of downlink symbols and NR of uplink symbols within the special time slot will need to be adjusted on aggressor cells to eliminate TDD self-interference during periods of tropospheric ducting. Are you prepared for tropospheric ducting with your 5G rollout? As a leading mobile operator, shouldn't you automatically know in near real time when and where TDD self-interference is occurring in your LTE and 5G networks? Automatically know the victim cells that are impacted and the interference levels and KPI impact for each cell? Automatically know the aggressor cells that are causing the self-interference seamlessly across multiple RAN vendors, even with differences in channel allocations among markets? Connect this new intelligence with SON and configuration management systems to adjust parameters and automatically resolve this TDD self-interference. 
Spectrum Net makes all of this possible. It's a game changer that's taking networks by storm across the globe. Spectrum Effect's new and novel approach enables operators to reveal and mitigate harmful anomalous interference with the power of AI. Protected by 20 patents, SpectrumNet performs seven stages of advanced analysis. SpectrumNet has learned the signatures of cross-border and TDD self-interference and automatically captures when this is occurring during a period of tropospheric ducting. Each of these signatures is part of SpectrumNet's industry-leading interference classification library. SpectrumNet automatically and dynamically identifies the victim cells and aggressor cells and triggers actions to mitigate interference due to tropospheric ducting. We will now review the actions available to operators to address TDD self-interference. First, for the aggressor cells, the special subframe configuration in LTE or slot format in 5G NR can be changed in order to increase the guard period. A 10 OFDM symbol guard period provides around 200 kilometers of protection. Second, the cell selection or handover configuration parameters can be adjusted in LTE or 5G NR. With this approach, these parameters are optimized dynamically so that both footprints of victim and aggressor cells can be reduced during the ducting period. Third, the antenna tilt can be lowered at the aggressor cells to reduce the TDD self-interference. SpectrumNet integrates with Operator SON or Configuration Management tools to automate these parameter changes. SpectrumNet enables operators to resolve ducting-induced TDD self-interference in a highly efficient and effective manner and return subscribers to Cloud9. Thank you for joining us. With SpectrumNet, addressing TDD self-interference, cross-border interference, and interference during periods of tropospheric ducting is a breeze. Contact us to learn how to get started with our three-month interference audit project for a fresh new perspective on the harmful RF interference in your network. Be sure to check out our website to watch other videos in our RF interference series.